I'm 19 years old. I'm currently working for the main channel of the Sidemen. They've got 20 million subscribers. So one of the largest creators in the world. And it took me three, four years to get here. And in this video, I want to share just a few of the lessons that got me to the point where I am now. Because three, four years ago, when I first started editing, when I was working for $2.50, $5 per video, working with gaming videos, I would have never thought that I would be here working full time, one, two days a week, making more per day than most people do in an entire month. So these are three lessons that I've learned. The first one being that branding is everything. You might be the best editor in the world, but if nobody knows that you exist, you're not going to make money. And by you watching this, I'm assuming you are someone that wants to make money. A lot of people kind of shit on this idea that making money is a bad thing or you're evil if you wanna make money. You can't say it out loud online. I'll say it out loud. I like making money. You're watching this video, you like making money. There's gonna be one weird kid in like some Instagram comment that thinks you're a weirdo for it or your friend that calls you a, like f kind of subconsciously feels like you're a bad person if you said, I want to make money out loud. But me and you can both say we're in the online space, we're editing, we're entrepreneurs, we like making money. And for you to make money from people hiring you, people need to know that you exist. Genuinely do this right now. If you go onto your Twitter, and go onto your Discord, would you even hire yourself? And don't start coping and thinking that, yeah, if I would give this guy a shot, or I know that if I did hire him, he'd do the work, right? But genuinely ask, if you were sat in front of this client, and there were 10,000 other editors, including me, including other editors that you look up to, would a creator look at you and say, yes, you would be all of them? Probably not. And I kind of had to tell myself that, and once I realized my profiles look like shit, I finally started fixing them. So it'll serve you quite well to have some humility and say your branding probably needs some work once you have a solid brand i promise you you have more clients than you know what to do with you genuinely have hundreds of creators rushing to you literally wallets in hand while most other like editors they're running towards clients and the clients are running away from them they're running towards editors like us who have solid brands so let me show you how to build a brand essentially go into your pages and ask yourself is this something that my dream client would like to see? Do you look like a Muppet who either doesn't post at all or you're just posting, reposting like shit posts and memes and these random editing giveaways? Is that something that a high paying creator would want to see? Probably not. Same thing for your Discord. I've seen people who genuinely have like some shit post or like some meme in their image or like, bro, I've seen like racist jokes in people's bios. Do you think some high paying creator with hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands per video is going to look at you and say, Yep, this is the guy that I'm going to trust to send thousands of dollars to and I know he'll get it back to me. So sort out your bios, make it simple. Just call it video editor, have your portfolio in there. If you haven't got a portfolio, that's another priority that I want you to sort out. Go into my other video where I show you how to make a portfolio, you can find it on my page. And make sure your Twitter and your Discord, it's clear that you're the same person. Have the exact same name and have the same profile picture. This is just so that it's cohesive. It's so that when someone sees you on two different platforms, they know it's still you. A brand, if you want to define it simply, it's just an online presence. And if your online presence is different on two completely different platforms, that's not much of a brand, is it? It's just a weak brand. I want to give you a story of the interview that I had while I was with the Sidemen. So I'm in this call and I'll be honest, I was a bit nervous. Even the fact that I've been editing for a few years now, I still get nervous on these calls. And the reason I was nervous is there's another editor that they have on the team. And there's one in specific that... I wasn't on the best of terms with. I was pretty sure that he hated me because I reached out to him on Twitter. Um, I would like send him DMs and stuff. He would ignore me. I, I follow him and you know sometimes when you follow someone, you unfollow them and follow them back just so that you come up in the notifications hoping they follow you back. He never followed me back and I would reply under his tweets like gassing up his posts. He would never respond to them. So I'm assuming like, okay, this guy hates me and he works on the Sidemen team. Now I'm on the interview with the Sidemen's like director and I'm waiting for the point where he says, do you know this other editor? He doesn't say that, but midway while we're having a conversation, I asked him like, oh, what made you actually choose me? I asked him at the end and he says, he said this. He was like, yeah, it's because every other editor speak, like when I brought up your name, when we were considering other editors to bring onto the team again, pretty much everyone brought up your name. And I'm thinking all this time, I thought this editor hated me. But in reality, he was behind my back spreading positive word of mouth. Word of mouth is the strongest 
form of marketing that you can get. With every other form of marketing, it's basically a linear correlation. If you double the amount of outreach, you will get double the amount of clients. Even other ways of marketing, if you double the, ma the amount of paid ads, or so other businesses do paid ads, if you double the amount of paid ads you do, you will get double the amount of leads that you get from those paid ads. If you doubled the amount of word of mouth you got, you don't get double the amount of leads. It actually increases exponentially. So instead of growing like this with the more you do, it grows like this. Because one person will tell one person and then each of those people will tell another person and then those people tell two people and then those all of those people tell another two each. And it's like this crazy like spider web of people that you reach and your name becomes like a household name. Like people are in conversations that you don't even know exist that are saying you're a good person, you're a good editor. And the way you get to this point is by being by being active on these platforms, so being active in Discord servers where you're helping other editors, where you're just being a nice person, where you're on Twitter, you're posting your own work, and when you see it on the timeline that there's someone else's work that you like, you don't just like scroll past it or like maybe you send a like, but you genuinely leave a comment. You're already thinking the thoughts of, oh, this guy's edit is kind of cool. Why don't you just say it in a comment? We all have this sort of consumer mindset, especially because of school, because of um, social media. We're all kind of made to become more of a consumer we're scrolling you're watching this video right now even me when i'm like in my default state so when i'm not like working i'm usually consuming and what i've realized over my career is the less i become a consumer and the more i become like a creator creator not meaning you have to make videos like these but just you're creating value on the marketplace you're adding something to social media rather than just allowing it to purely put stuff onto you the more success i've had you don't want to be someone who's just watching other people's edits if you see something you like genuinely say it and when you do this people start seeing your name people start realizing like oh this guy's like a decent person he's a nice person of course you don't need to be fake about this but by simply putting your word out there you become someone in other people's head and when they go off there might be one person that works with a huge creator and he just mentions your name and then two weeks later you get a dm saying that someone wants to work with you and you have no idea where this inbound client's coming from but in reality it was because you were just being a nice person online. The next lesson I want to share, I've got it written down here, is higher paying clients are so much easier to work with. It was hell working with a lot of clients. I'll keep it raw. My first client was $2.50 in February 2021. It was supposed to be $5 and he scammed me for half of it. Bro, he scammed me for $2.50. How broke do you need to be to scam me for $2.50? And I'm a 16 year old kid, so obviously it kind of hurt me as well. And if I lost $2.50 now, fair enough, but god damn, I was a 16 year old kid making my first few dollars. Like, Give me a fucking break. And then I started working with Fortnite montages. So these clips of people getting like kills in a game called Fortnite and I'd sync it up to music and I'd be doing it for $10, $15 and I'd be doing that for about a year. And so these kids that were paying me 10, 15 bucks were the ones where if there was a slight thing off, that would be what was wrong. And when I started getting into content editing for 50, 100, 200 bucks, these were the same clients that would say, oh no, there's this thing wrong. Can you get it done? Or um, can you, sh I've had this once before. Can you jump in a call with me? and share your screen so I know you're working. Do you know how insane that is? But I felt like I was some guinea pig uh, like in like some cage where they're doing experiments on me. I was there. I don't know why I still said yes. I was there like sharing my screen muted um, where I'm just like editing so that he knows I'm not actually wasting like his money. It's like, that's so stupid, bro. If I get your video done, it doesn't matter how, how many hours I took on it. If I get it done on the deadline, like who cares? But anyways, I've never had a high paying client where someone's paying me 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 per video where they do anything like that they literally just say here's clips i go get it done i send it in send an invoice it gets paid it's so much nicer sure there's problems that come up naturally where it's like oh there's this mistake we made there's this deadline that's a little bit shorter can we fit and like there's problems that come up but the difference is they communicate it so much better it becomes less of like a me versus this creator and we're going at it but now it's more me and his client we're in a team and it's just we're trying to figure out what the solution is to this problem rather than me and him going at war we're going at war with a different enemy which is like the youtube algorithm or just trying to make a good video and that's so much more of a wholesome relationship you get that when you work with high paying clients but the way you get to this point is by enduring the shitty clients and over delivering when i had those 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollar videos. Imagine that I didn't like those clients. 
So I would just rush their video. I wouldn't put in my work. I'd be thinking, hmm, $50. I have to get it done in four and a half hours in order to get minimum wage or like some shit like that. Imagine that's the mindset that I had. Would I be able to then put that on my portfolio and get a better client? Of course not. Because if I rush a video for a certain client, I try putting that on my portfolio. No other higher paying clients will want to see that. Who, who would be attracted by like a shitly edited video? Other shit clients. So is it any wonder why you see all of these editors struggling where they are working, they're working a long time and they've done client after client or video after video and they're wondering why they can't get anyone higher for months and months on end because you don't try on their, like they don't try on their videos. So when you get a video over deliver, even if it feels as though like the guy's a bit of a cunt because honestly, it's honestly in your benefit. People think I'm a good person for saying this where it's like, oh, I just want to give this client the best video. I'm sure it is true now. Like now I genuinely love my clients, but at the time I keep it so rude, bro. These guys were assholes to me in a selfish way. I still gave them the best video because I knew when I do the best video possible, I can post it on Twitter. I'll get more leads. I can put it on my portfolio. The leads that I actually do get would be more likely to hire me. And I get more practice so that my editing actually gets better. It is literally in your detriment if you rush a video. The truth is, it's not your fault that you rush videos or you sort of feel have this mindset of, I'm not getting paid enough, therefore I won't try. This sounds kind of like weird conspiracy theory, but the school system basically rewards you doing the minimum amount of effort for the maximum amount of reward. So like, you do like just enough to pass basically. That's how most people's mindset are. Even if you did well in school, it's like you'll do just enough in order to get the grade that you normally get. You won't, like, let's say you're already at an A star, but you're at the bottom of an A star, you won't try to get 100%. Or if you're at, like, you're slightly failing, you're not thinking about how to get an A star, you're thinking, how can I just about pass? School is a system that rewards this sort of behavior where you do the minimum amount of effort and it's sort of bled into our mindset when it comes to entrepreneurship. I remember when I first started, I, actually no, I've never had this mindset to be honest. I've never personally had this mindset and I actually think this is why I have done a lot better than most editors and you can call that ego but it's genuinely true and I've seen this in all the editors that do extremely well. They don't have this mindset of I'll do just enough to get it done. I remember when I was starting out, when I'd have a project for maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars, I would treat that project genuinely like it was my existence, like I'm getting paid thousands and thousands for it. Even if I'm getting paid like a hundred bucks, I would stay up late at night for the smallest animation. Let's say I've done like a smooth animation and right at the end it kind of does like a little jitter. I will spend the extra three, four minutes to just take out that little jitter where I'm messing about with the with the little arrow. Like you know that um that bar on Premiere Pro, that little blue bar. I'm moving it slightly up and down by like one, two pixels. I'll spend like 10 minutes on that. That was the level of care I put into my videos and other editors that do extremely well, I promise you, every editor and even entrepreneur like in any other business, they put this level of intricacy into their work. Of course, this doesn't mean be a perfectionist, like there's a level to this, this doesn't mean spend four months on a video when you said you'd get it done in four days, but putting in the work that you would genuinely put into a video if it was your own video. You knowing that you doing this video well is not only good for the client, but it's better for your growth as an editor. The third lesson that I want to share, it actually relates quite nicely to the last point of what makes like an editor do well versus not well is realize this shit doesn't come by accident. When I speak to friends or when I speak to like an average person, what they talk about with business is, is you can tell they have this sort of vibe where they keep it on the side. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm starting this business. I just want to do it as like a side thing or I'm just thinking about it. And then you'll see them months, months later, years later, you ask them how it's going and it's still them thinking about it or it's still, I'm just thinking about doing it on the side. You probably have a friend like this where you try talking about business with him or you try talking about like these more intellectual topics and he kind of doesn't take action. That's what happens when you try keeping it on the side or you, you just like trying out editing. Do you think that I would be working with the sidemen, my dream client, I'll keep it real. I've worked with other guys with 10, 20, 30 million subscribers. I've worked with other creators bigger than the sidemen, but I'm under NDA so I can only say they've got like about 30 million subscribers plus. Do you think I've done that by accident? Do you think I woke up one day where I'm like, hmm, I'm just editing for fun. And it's like, I, I guess this thing, I just do it as a hobby. If I did that, if I had that mindset, I wouldn't make money from editing. You can't get a decent amount from editing by keeping it on the side. And that's with any business, that's with anything in life. The guy that says that he just wants to kind of get into like, 
have a better social life. He just wants to do stuff, stuff like that. He doesn't have a better social life. You probably said you just want to balance out your social life. You're still a fucking loner. You have like one or two friends that maybe you talk to and you kind of cope by saying that, oh, I'd rather have a close circle. The truth is, if you went to a cafe right now, you wouldn't be able to speak to a random person. So don't start coping and saying that I just do it because I like having a close circle. Your social skills are shit. My throat like fucked up from doing that then. But I'm saying this because that was me when I was younger, when I was 15, 16, even early 17 years old. I was that kid who would say, oh, I don't really want to talk to anyone because I'm just like focusing on myself right now. Or yeah, I can't be bothered going out with people. Or I can't be bothered speaking to that person. I told myself these things. It wasn't because I was genuinely too busy. It wasn't because I didn't care about meeting new people. It's because I physically couldn't. I literally didn't have the social skills to do it. I was just coping so hard. And then I read this book, it was called How to Influence and Influence People. I started learning how to speak to other people. Like you start learning, okay, so it sounds kind of autistic, but you look at people, you smile, you ask them a brain dead question of like, oh, like you're right. And then they say something and you just hold eye contact. And then when they say something, you thread onto it. So they say, oh yeah, I'm good. And then you ask, what are you doing? Like, what are you getting up to? And then when they say something, you say, oh, that's cool. You ask another question. Like I had to learn this stuff like step by step. And I wasn't good at it at first. I'll never forget the first few conversations. I'll be like, I just smile and I'll forget what to say. Cause I forgot that it's normal for other people to look me in the eyes. Like I'm not used to other people looking me in the eyes. So I just freeze. And that's what it was like when I first started like working on my social skills. Imagine I just started coping again and saying, oh no, it's fine. Who cares? Like I'm too busy for social, like for meeting new people anyways. I have a few friends anyways. Like I kind of had to sit there in pain and say, okay, I am shit at this thing. And unless I put focused effort into it, I will not improve. I literally made it like my life mission while I was in college at around 17 years old. So college for anyone that's not in the UK is about 17 years old here. I had to put focused effort where literally every single day I would set myself a task of talking to, to I think it was four random people every single day. And at least one of them had to be a conversation longer than a few minutes. I hated it. I fucking hated it. But by the end of that, by second year college, so I'm about 18 at this point, I'd become that guy who I was able to basically speak with anyone. I knew that in college, in any single room, I had people that either I knew already because I'd been doing this for a few months, or if I didn't know someone, I knew how to introduce myself. I know that when I go to a cafe now, I go to random cafes, I'll travel like to different countries. I'll be able to meet people. In fact, just recently I came back from Bali. And there was this one cafe that um, not cafe, it's like a co-working space in Bali, it's called Tribal. It's like this entrepreneur hotspot where all these entrepreneurs from like different walks of life, life this guy doing an AI startup, this one guy um, running like a SaaS or like all these people coming in. These are literally millionaires, guys that I would love to know and guys that you would probably benefit from knowing. And I was able to speak to them. I'm able to now have connections with guys literally making millions and I'm able to show them my stuff and I'm able to say like oh this is what I'm doing with my business and this is my like sort of thought process behind and they'll be able to say like oh that's good why don't you change this this and this and I'm like bro that would have taken me months to learn the way I got in contact with these people was genuinely by going to this co-working space and I had to look at him in the eyes and say oh hey bro like how's it going it sounds so stupidly simple but when you're in that moment it feels so scary. I was only able to get to that point because for literally 6 to 12 months I'd been grinding social skills. You don't get to a point like that by accident. Just in the same way you don't get to a point where you're editing full time, you're editing for your dream clients, you're editing in a way where you're making like that 5, 10, however many k per month. Like I was making around 12k at this point. You don't get to that point where you're doing that and enjoying your life by accident. This takes you to this journey that you're on will take you dedicating a large portion of your life to it not like large portion as in like years wise but you every single day will feel as though you're working and that will scare a lot of people most people can't handle that most people hate the idea of work and they can't imagine every single day what you mean you can't take weekends off but what about like work-life balance you can't rest it's like sure rest work-life balance like you being able to socialize these things are important but you actively every single day doing something to do with work you editing you researching about editing you being able to learn a new effect you networking like these are all things that if you can do for a long enough period of time where you've set yourself the goal that okay I want to make this money from editing I'm not just going to try editing I'm not going to keep it on the side I'm going to make it a full-time thing that's when you make results if you don't set yourself the goal you will never achieve it if you tell yourself you're going to keep it on the side honestly you're probably not even going to keep it on the side what I found is whenever I set myself a goal like a more ambitious thing where I say this 10k was the number that 
stuck out to me because um at the time like especially online the whole like 10k per month thing was kind of blowing up so i told myself like a lot of people oh i want to make 10k per month i set myself that goal i was making about i think 2k a month at the time the very next month i didn't reach my 10k goal i failed but what was interesting is i was making about four and a half k then i'm like okay next month i want to make 10k i made a thousand it actually dropped from there imagine i quit I still set myself the goal of one thousand uh, of ten thousand. I never lowered my goal. I didn't start saying like, "Oh, I'll just do it on the side." Anyways, imagine I had a bad month and I coped. The next month I made eight thousand. The month after that I made thirteen thousand. And then since then I've pretty much like on some months I'll make ten k like ten k plus. Some months I'll make a little bit less, like five k. I can basically I'm at a point now where I can make around five k working like an hour or two a week. Like it sounds disgusting, but that's what I've managed to do because of the setup that I've built right now. Setup not meaning the actual PC, but the client, the clients that I have, and then the amount of like focus and deep work I'm able to do. I can make 5K without fucking trying. And I've had multiple 10K months. Imagine if I had the mindset of, I'm just doing it on the side, or I'm just doing it as a hobby. If it works, I guess it'll be okay. I would not have come out of those 2k 4k 1k like low moments if i had that shitty mindset so you need to set yourself a goal now don't be like everyone else where you're saying i just do understand i'm thinking about making a business you hear people saying i'm thinking about making a business and you look down on them saying like they don't take action if you tell yourself i'm just thinking about making it like doing well as an editor or it would be nice if i did this i'm just doing it on the side you're no better than those people i want you to set yourself the goal and the reason i'm so adamant on this genuinely it changed my life I set myself that goal about two years ago. I've achieved it. I sit here today, I'm 19 years old. I no longer go to university. My entire career I did while I was in full-time education. So for any of you bastards that have like this limiting belief of, oh, but I can't do it because I'm in school or, but I have to do like, go to a gym as well. But uh, my parents don't want me to. Bro, I had all those things as well. I have Asian parents that wanted me to go to university. And I did all of this while I was in full-time education. So don't be a pussy and say, oh, I have all these things. that uh, I, I have school. Everyone fucking has school, bro. So don't start coping. Hoping. But imagine that I didn't set myself a big ass goal and I didn't work towards it. I would have been in uni right now. I would have had a normal job and I still would have been struggling. That's what's crazy. The sad part is most people, they work a normal job and money is still tight. Money is still on their mind. And sure, I'm not like rich. I'm not fucking like wealthy. I make about 15k, 20k a month right now. I'm not hugely wealthy. Like that's a good amount for my age and for a normal person. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, and I sound big headed saying this, but there's guys out there making 100, 200, 300, 400, 500K a month. There's guys that I've met that are doing that. So me saying like 20K, it's not bad, but I'm because I'm not much of like a materialistic guy. Like I don't wear like crazy stuff. I wear the same black t-shirt every day. It's good money. And I now can go wherever I want. When I travel to a country, I can literally on the next day, book a flight. I actually did this when I went Amsterdam recently as well, literally. So this is what I was doing last month, right? Beginning of the month, I go London. Um, I booked out a penthouse with me and a few of my boys. Like, um, this isn't like a shill or anything. Me and a few other guys in like my private community, the editing there, um, we booked like a penthouse in London. They all flew in because now they're making money editing. We booked a penthouse and then the week after that, so when I, we all go back, the week after that, I was going Bali with one of my editing friends. His name's Danny. And um, he's an editor as well. We both did really well. And now we're, we're booking a trip to Bali. I had about three, four days in between. Out of nowhere, another friend of mine says that he's in Amsterdam. Without telling him, I book a flight. So literally, I'm going from London. I go to London to stay. Come back. Literally, the next day, I go Amsterdam. After a few days, come back. Next day, go Bali. Spend a few days there. Uh, it's been like a week there. Come back. And it's like, literally, I didn't check flight to flight ticket prices or whatever i didn't have to check like whether i'm able to afford it i wasn't i didn't have to check with, with my boss whether i'm able to have a break or i had to pull in the sickie it was genuinely like i wanted to go and then i went and that sounds egotistical as hell but the reason i'm saying it now is because this shit still surprises me i'll keep it real i've only been living like like this where i don't check price tags or things like that I've only had this for about a year now and holy fuck people weren't lying when they said it like this feels good this is what people meant by financial freedom. I used to always think it was like cars or, you know, when you, if you told the average person what is financial freedom, you think, okay, the watch, the cars and like living in Dubai. Like that's, that's like the, the financial freedom in most people's eyes. I actually find this a lot better. It's like, it sounds stupid, but 
I like the fact that I can buy white Nike socks without thinking. When I was a kid, I'll keep it real. I had like holes, not holes in my socks, but I'd be wearing like the same socks so often. And it was like half the time when I'm in the morning getting ready for school, I'd be late for school because I was wait. I was like trying to find like a matching pair of socks. And it wasn't because we couldn't afford socks, but it wasn't exactly a priority because naturally I'm from like not a poor house, but like a lower income household. So it was like me now being able to say, okay, I just have like a shit ton of white socks, the Nike ones, which are like a little bit more expensive, but I like them. I now, in every single morning, I no longer have to worry. Do I have socks that are washed or like that don't have a hole in them? I'm able to say that when I go out to eat, I no longer have to look at a menu and think which one has the best taste to price ratio. I just think, oh, that one, that sounds nice. Let's get that one. I genuinely buy what I want to eat. And it sounds so simple, but it's these small things in life that I've found kind of made all of this worth it. I've gotten to a point now where this is what I've achieved. And it sounds kind of egotistical. I think I still feel a little strange saying it, like taking it all in, but it's fucking cool, man. Do you think three years ago, I was working on some shitty laptop, which dead ass, like, but I couldn't run Discord properly on it. I used to have to either choose to message my clients or I could edit. I couldn't have Discord and Premiere open at the same time. I used some cracked version of Premiere. Even Premiere, it was like for me to successfully render a video. I'd finish my client video, pick up my laptop from my room. I'd walk downstairs. I'd go into the kitchen and open the kitchen fridge, the freezer actually, and then put my laptop in there and let it render for about 10, 15 minutes. That was to render out like a two minute video. Then when the video is done, I'd take it out and then I'll send it off with the cold, the cold laptop in my hands. I used to have to put my laptop in the freezer because it was so shit that it would overheat when it would try to render anything. To think I've gone from there to this setup now, this was my dream setup. I used to watch those top 10 teenager setup videos on like YouTube and stuff. And I'd be so jealous because it's like, I couldn't afford a PC as a kid. Like my dad couldn't afford one. So I started editing on the laptop I used. My dad got me for school and I sit here now. I've got some like 4K PC. It's some, it's a PC where it's like an all white PC. I, oh, fuck, I'll show it to you. But it's like, it's a P, it's like an all white PC. And I didn't have to think about wh whether I could afford the parts or not. I genuinely bought that GPU and it's like a 3080. It costed me like an extra 1K just to get it in white. But I was like, I wanted it in white. And that's so fucking cool. And I have my dream, like the, the monitor setup that I used to see on those Pinterest posts. I've got that now. I've got my, I've got some like some fancy ass camera. I actually regret getting this, but at least you can see my sexy ass in high quality now. I was able to do this because of editing and fuck it changed my life. And the fact that I'm able to help others do this now where I'm sharing my lessons and instead of being like other other editing creators where they're saying go oh, like here's how to get clients or here's a quick tip to get like five thousand dollars every video like all this bullshit where they haven't done it themselves i'm able to say okay i've done it myself you can scroll on my twitter vfx malice you can literally scroll through it and be like okay like all those stories that malice is saying him working on fortnite videos it's like he still has proof of them on his twitter like i can see his growth and i've gone through what so many editors wanted and i find it so fulfilling that I'm able to help you actually do the same. I mean, I hope you like this video. Pretty un pretty raw. I'm probably not going to edit this. Hope you like it. Um, If you do like these sort of raw videos, can you comment please? Because I'm trying to get better at speaking as well. So if you like these raw videos, it's good for you because you get the value. You We don't cut anything out and I get value because I'm able to know what you boys like. So yeah, hope you like this bro. Love you. Mwah.